dear fellow, fellow parliamentarians, dear colleagues, dear friends. I'm honored and pleased to be here in Skopje to meet again with all of you. And I want to express my special thanks to the speaker, Mr. Draiko Velianowski, and the vice speaker, Ms. Renata Deskoska, for your warm welcome and for hosting us in this beautiful country. This city's autumn meeting is about confidence building. Today and tomorrow, we want to explore and discuss what we as parliamentarians can do to strengthen confidence building measures within the OECE region. And we do so, as we do so, it is important to remember that very often one of the most difficult things for our governments is to take into account the interests of other governments. Our voters put us into office with the expectation that we look out for their interests. But in today's world, a nation's interests are very closely interlinked with those of others, which means cooperation is necessary. Without cooperation, there is no chance to get ahead. No country can ensure, for example, its own security just by its own. Instead, we must promote dialogue and compromise. We must engage with e each other and search for common ground. We must widen our perspective and see the world not only from our national point of view, but also through the eyes of our neighbors, partners, and even opponents. This is how we build confidence and ultimately replace the threat of conflict, conflict with long-term stability. This is the only way, dear colleagues, how we effectively address issues such as radicalization, terrorism, the challenge of migration and refugees, or even climate change. Unfortunately, we are not there yet. Our collective response to the migration challenge could have been much better. So far, we have not, we have not succeeded in reconciling the interests of security and stability with the rights of migrants and refugees for safety and a humane treatment and therefore also not with our own high standards, which we consider to be part of our values. So far, we have also failed to address the underlying causes of migrations, issues like poverty, conflict, political repression, or as mentioned before, climate change. Dear colleagues, these are the issues we must tackle together and address effectively if we hope to contain not only the migration and refugee crisis, but also other dilemmas, other developments that may be on the horizon. Thankfully, we have a model of comprehensive security that can help ensure our future is one of peace and prosperity rather than instability and insecurity. The principles are laid out in the 1975 Helsinki Final Act, the 1990 Charter of Paris, and other uh, landmark OEC accords provide a blueprint for real cooperation and dialogue. Dear colleagues, we do have these agreements, but if we want them to fully develop their potential, we need greater political will, and greater political will we only get through trust and confidence building. For this, it is essential that we all acknowledge that a European security architecture that doesn't work for all of us does in fact not work for any of us. Dear colleagues, here in Southeast Europe, the OEC has made a real and tangible difference in the lives of so many people. 
from promoting peace and security to providing support on legal reform and electoral best practices, from police training to facilitating multi-ethnic dialogue. The list of achievements of the OEC in this region is long and impressive. This region has shown how much progress can be achieved whenever there is a genuine will to comply with international commitments, while simultaneously making the best use of the OEC and its unique toolbox, including the parliamentary assembly itself. Naturally, some challenges continue to exist and new ones add to the burden. But this, one, this is one more reason why we must also live up to our own commitments and renew our collective focus and attention on this region for the well-being for all of us. Dear colleagues and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to discussing these issues and more at the round table tomorrow with representatives of all six OEC field missions in the region. Our discussions will focus on, among other things, the development of de democratic institutions and human rights in Southeast Europe and on the invaluable work that the OEC does on the ground. I regret that the Turkish Minister of Affairs will not be delivering a special address here today due to a last minute development. I traveled to Ankara in August, exactly one month after the coup attempt, together with a delegation of other senior leaders from the OEC PA and representatives of the OEC gov governmental branch. It is one of our basic principles of the OEC to stay in dialogue even in difficult times or if you want, especially in difficult times. Dialogue makes it possible to address issues of concern, but also promotes mutual understanding. This was to show our support for Turkish democracy, but at the same time to stress Turkey's international commitments, especially with regards to human rights. I'm confident that by doing so, we started a mutual beneficial process. I thank you all once again for being here. And again, this to the speaker and the vice speaker for your participation today at the opening of the session. I offer the parliamentary sincere gratitude to you, our hosts, and especially to the staff of the parliament working tirelessly with us for the excellent organization of the meeting. Your warmth and your hospitality make it very enjoyable to do our work. And you know, Mother Teresa has been a member of, the, of Skopje. And Mother Teresa, who was born here, she said, the miracle is not that we do this work, but that we even are happy to do it. Thank you very much.